Hi guys, happy Saturday. So, alright, here we go with part three, and we're going to go into the evocation uh, ritual, and we are going to go into the questioning of what we evoke and all that good stuff. So, and Miss Risky, your reading will be coming up. So, alright, here we have part three. So, Modern Magic, 11 Lessons in the, uh, the High Magical Arts by Donald Michael Craig. So, alright, so as I have shown, most forms of magic can be done by yourself, which is the best. So, indeed, most great magical group workings have the group merely observing and adding their visualizations to that of the operator. So, the magician actually doing the work. So, you know, you have all these other people doing all this stuff, and you don't have to worry about it. Sounds good to me, sometimes. So, so, but with the magic of evocation, it's very different. Although it is possible to even evocation solo, it's very difficult. No, it's not. Not for, not for me, it's not. Many people trying this type of solo work achieve little of any success. What about you guys? Have you ever had any success with evocation solo? I have, so. Therefore, it is necessary to have a seer help you with this, with the evocation. Well, maybe in a traditional or a ceremonial uh, magic type of context. So, or if you are going to act as the seer, you will need another person to perform important parts of the ritual. Okay, so yeah, it is in the ceremonial context of this, the ceremonial context. Okay, so if it, okay, it is the seer's task to look into the mirror and see the being evoked. So the seer then functions, uh, functions as an intermediary between the ritualist and the evoked entity. So the ritualist, oh, I like that word. It would be a good movie, or the ritualist. That sounds like a really good movie. Or operator recites the callings, which not only call the desired entity to the mirror, but also aid the seer in obtaining the vision necessary to see something in the mirror. Okay, so yes, within an entire ceremonial magic, uh, ritual magic, um, great magic working, group working, that would be very important to have the seer, to have all the people working with you, so. Alright, if you are working with a group of people or your first trial at evocation, evoca, there's that word again, evocative, evocative, evocative magic, evocative, should it involve as the seer, the person who has the most psychic sensitivity. So clues to this area ease at doing divinations, uh, divinations which go far beyond the inherent limitations of the system used. Uh, an example, extreme precision, divinations which provide correct on very regular basis, a very detailed dream memory, a very strongly emotional or over or over emotional person, a daydreamer, etc. There we go. Empaths, I think. Hair. I think we are very, yes, just sensitive to everything. Alright, so he says here, I hate to sound sexist, sexist but because of soci societal, societal, whatever, influences, the fact is that the best seers are usually women. It's true. That's true. So, if you have a person such as that described, has been described in your group, be that person male or female, use that person as your seer in your first experiment. If not, try a volunteer. So the worst thing that could happen is that your seer will see nothing. It is so easy. I mean, I can look into my 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 iPad. And it's black when it's shut down and it doesn't light up, and it, you can use that as a mirror. It works. So, all right. So this would not necessarily be due to failure of failure of your experiment, but rather because the seer does not have um, adequately opened psychic vision, and that's your third eye. So. So for those of you who have been working solo, here is some very practical advice on how to find a seer. So I am giving this advice here as a placing an advertisement in your oh in your local paper for a seer is not advisable. Yeah, that wouldn't that'd be odd. That'd be really odd. All right. So the best place to seek out a seer is at your local occult bookstore. So or a supply shop. Simply just hang out. Uh, there for a while and look for people coming into the store who are interested in magic and divination. When you meet such a person, introduce yourself and ask such things as, do you do divination? Um, are they usually correct? Do you have vivid dreams? Do you daydream frequently? So 
if you are shy about meeting people, remember that you are not trying to pick someone up for a romantic situation. You are looking for a co-worker. This should be clearly explained to the person if they are interested in working magically with you. So if the person is interested, perform your daily work with him or her sitting in your circle and see how the person responds. So if there seems to be a good working relationship possible between you, um, if, you've, if your selected seer seems appropriate, it is time to tell the person what his or her preparations will be. Okay, so I totally see where that's coming from. So on the facing page, you will see a drawing attributed to Saint Germain. So on the left, there is a male seer peering into a goblet used as a magic mirror. The woman ritualist on the right holds a knife and wand, and they are surrounded by alchemical symbolism, which is irrelevant to this discussion. So there is a fire burning directly below the face of the seer. Now the inhalation of the smoke will cause a change in the blood chemistry of the seer. But it's not going to cross the blood brain barrier. Nothing will. Unless you ingest it. So also notice that it is, it is possible that the ritualist is using the wand to hit the seer. Oh, it does look like, uh, looks like a little bit of a Crowley work right here. So, um, this combination of pain and lack of oxygen combines the, um, altered, combi combines to alter this consciousness of the seer and allow him to more easily observe these sights within the magic mirror. There is no doubt that an altered state of consciousness is a necessity for the seer, so this can be accomplished in a number of ways. A mild state of self-hypnosis will suffice. I would actually do that first before I do anything. So if a person is not an alcoholic, nor allergic to liquor, that person may be allowed to drink to a state of mild intoxication. I don't, I don't trust that. There are many natural and synthetic drugs which will alter your consciousness, although I do not advocate the use of any drug which is not specifically prescribed for you by a licensed doctor. It would be foolish of me to think that uh, none of my students used what are known as recreational drugs, so don't do that. Don't use those. Um, I'm not going to prescribe this or their usage to alter your consciousness for magical purposes because if you don't already know how they affect you, I'm not going to suggest that you try them to find out. So I will say that uh, some people have told me of great success when they have chemicalized themselves. Mm, I wouldn't just be careful. So here is the magic mirror illustration. As you can see, it does look very uh, painful. It looks very Aleister Crowley-ish. So you guys can screenshot that, just make sure my face is out of the picture. So yeah, so we see the goblet. Uh, we don't know what he's doing with his hand there, but we see her, the seer, naked, topless, hitting this guy. So, and then we have all this down here, and then we have alchemy, uh, symbols of alchemy up here, and we have Hebrew letters, just all kinds of stuff, so. All right. Now, ritualized um, induction of small amounts of pain, such as implied in the drawing, can also affect your consciousness. I don't think I can do that. I, don't, I honestly don't think I can do that. So, the small amounts of pain cause various hormones to flow throughout the bloodstream, and these hormones affect the brain, brain mind complex. So, there are drawings, at least as far back as Pompeii, showing ritual scourging. Oh. Alright, some Wiccan groups use this as a part of certain of as a part of certain of their rituals. So pain is a part of spiritual practice in some shamanistic cultures. Even some very mainstream Christian sects have used and use their use hair shirts and self flagellation. Really? Christian groups? I personally am against this practice, I am too, but there are those who have found it effective. Uh, no. I don't wanna I'm not putting myself in pain the purpose. So it is believed that many of the visions seen by seers have been induced by the demon CO. Here CO stands for carbon monoxide, which is very deadly to you. So the result of fires or incense using up the oxygen in a room. When using incense, always be sure to have fresh oxygen coming into the room through an open window or door. Still the odor of the incense especially if burned near the seer, can have a remarkable effect on the consciousness of the person. True. Meditation works just as well. So, sexual activity is another means of changing hormonal balance and affecting the brain-mind complex, but that will be discussed in another lesson. Yeah, I'm not going to get flagged for that again. 
still another way to alter the consciousness is by denying sleep for, for several days. I wouldn't suggest that whatsoever. Anything that's going to harm you or your body, hmm, don't do it. It's not worth it. So, um, where, where did it go? So, there are even other methods. There are other methods, too. You can probably think of several. In any event, allow the seer the choice of which method or methods he or she wishes to use uh, to alter the consciousness. So this person should have a medical exam first to be sure that nothing could possibly damage the seer's health. There we go. Big warning right there. Don't do any of these. Don't. Just don't. Practice meditation. Practice it naturally. Practice raising your vibration. Daydream. All that good stuff. So please know that none of these methods mentioned, if done with care, will hurt a healthy person. So further note that they have been done for thousands of years safely and are still being done in shamanistic cultures. Yeah, but those people in the shamanistic cultures are totally uh, accustomed to that, to that way of, you know, sleep deprivation. Uh, when you, you know, you don't have enough sleep, you start to hallucinate and you see stuff. It's not fun. All right, so however, also know that nobody is forcing you to do anything. So always say no. If you're not comfortable doing something within a magic ritual, say no. Just say no. So if you try to actually perform a vocative magic using devices illegal or legal, neither the author, publisher, nor distributor of this course assumes or will have any responsibility for your foolishness or disregard for the law and your health. I will read that again. So, where did I go? Note that anybody is nobody is forcing you to do anything. So, if you try to actually perform evo evocative magic using devices, illegal or legal, neither the author, publisher, nor distributor, me, of this course, assume or will have any responsibility for your foolishness or disregard for the law and your health. So, keep it clean. So the following rituals and explanations are presented as educational so that you can see what many people have done and what many people are doing. Should you decide to attempt such a ritual, all responsibility for your health is yours. All your, it's all on you. So further, neither the author, publisher, nor distributor in any way condone the use of illegal substances nor the abuse or wrongful use of legal substances or drugs. Don't. Don't do it. So with this word of warning, we will move into the study of how to do rituals from the Goetia. This is the good part. I love this part. This is my favorite. It really is. So. So there are two other things that you will need to obtain for this ritual, other than your normal tools and the, uh, the triangle of art. Did you guys create your, your triangle again? No? It's very fun. Alright. Okay, so the first is a set of two candle holders with stems long enough that they uh, may be held by the seer while he or she looks into the mirror. Alternatively, you can obtain candle stands which reach the floor and are about four or more feet tall. Ah, uh, yes. Learn. those work perfect. Needless to say, uh, the latter are far more expensive if you go to like the dollar store. No, they're not. If you do get the ones which can be um, handheld, make sure that they have a big enough drip protectors so that the seer is not shocked by hot wax suddenly falling on his or her hands. This will also help you prevent some um, having to scrape wax off of your flooring or ironing it out of your carpet. Alright, now the second necessary item is the seal of the entity you wish to evoke. So, for this, you must get a copy of the Goetia. So, each seal, each seal represents and gives power uh, to deal with an associated entity called a spirit. So, to determine which spirit to call and which seal to use, you will need to look to the book and see which powers each spirit offers. There's some really good books out there on the Goetia. very good books. All right, let us say, for example, that you have reached a point in your life where you do not wish to be bothered by other people and their problems. You want to be alone. This is the true meaning of invisibility when described in the grimoires. So, 
it's not literal invisibility, it's just being left alone. So, alright, so invisibility does not mean that you will become transparent, but that others act as if you are not there. So, looking through the descriptions of the spirits, you find the name Baal. So, Baal is said to have the power to maketh thee go invisible. Yeah, so, he appeareth in divers shapes, sometimes like a cat, sometimes like a toad, and sometimes like a man, and sometimes all these forms at once. He speaketh, speaketh hoarsely. Further, <laughs> we are told that the seal must be worn like a necklace by the seer, or else he, Baal, will not do the hom do the homage. So the seal of Baal looks like this. And you guys can screenshot this too, or you can just look it up. Or if you actually have the Goetia. So that is the seal of Baal. I don't know if I can really get that to focus. There we go. Yeah, just try to, I don't know. If you guys can get it, or not, you guys can definitely get it. Um, Google Images, perfect. Perfect way. So, now. Alright, it may be made on paper, um, as per the lesson on talismans. I do uh, bamboo paper, um, especially for my my gin. I do um, yes, bamboo paper. It's easy. It does not give off smoke when you have to color them in for the different um, like the dukes, uh, the marquises, the kings. Those you do not have to uh, yeah, when you color them in, so they give off no smoke if you burn them afterwards. So a string needs to be attached so that it may go around the seer's neck. But it must be long enough that without removing the string from around his or her neck, the seer may pick it up and look at it. So, yes, set up the temple as usual, place the triangle of art outside the circle in the east. A chair may be placed in the east within the area of the circle for the seer. So if you feel, the seer may need it. Both of you should be robed and the seer should wear the seal. The two candelabra should be in the east on either side of the chair, if there is a chair. <clears throat> or to either side of the space uh, where the seer will stand. These two candles should not be lit. You will also want a pencil or pen and some paper to write down any messages the seer may give you. Even a recorder, like a little recorder, perfect. Get, you know, you pop your iPhone out and do whatever with it. Just push record. Voice or memos. Which I know a lot of artists that do that. They'll wake up at like 4 a.m. and have a, a song in their head and they'll get their, you know, voice memo out and record it, so. Alright, now the seer should be in the east of the circle facing the east. So, there should be incense near the seer so that he or she will inhale much of the smoke. So, perform the opening by watchtower. As you do, the seer should pay no attention to the ritual. So, it is the seer's task to stare at Oh, to stare at and contemplate the seal. Any method to alter the consciousness of the seer should have already begun with the exception of self-hypnosis, which should wait until after the opening. If you have enough people, one should be assigned the task of making sure that the incense is always flowing toward the seer. So yeah, ritual intoxication. So make sure that when casting the circle, you walk outside the seer so that the seer is definitely within the magic circle. So the operator should stand behind the seer and light, or have someone light the seer's candles. Put the candles in the seer's hands. This will force the seer to drop the seal. Make sure that when it uh, hangs down, the seal is facing out. If you are using a floor standing candelabra, tell the seer to let go, to let go the seal and stare into the magic mirror. Tell the seer in a smooth, comforting voice. Stare deeply into the mirror. Do not look at it, but into it. Move the candles so that you can see yourself, but so that you do not directly see the reflection of the candle's flame. Stare deeper and deeper and deeper. It's really interesting. I mean, really interesting. And I put blurry. Am I blurry? No. There we go. Perfect. All right. So, here we go. Alright, now, now it's, it's the time to do the first conjuration. 
So when a spirit's name is mentioned and it is capitalized, you should use the appropriate name of the spirit you are evoking in place of, in this example, Baal. Alright, so here is the conjuration. Hopefully I'm not conjuring up anything while I do this, while I just read. I mean, I'm not doing anything preliminary, any preliminaries or any preparations, except for, for showers. Alright, so I do evocate and conjure the O Spirit Baal. And being with power armed from the Supreme Majesty, I strongly command thee by Baralin. Well, I don't know that. Baralinus. Wow. Okay, so by the most powerful princes, uh, Genai, uh, Liadai, and mini ministers of the. <laughs> Tartian abode, and by the chief prince of the seat of Apologia in the Ninth Legion, I do evoke thee. And by evoking, evocating, evocating, conjure thee. Wow, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you will have a, a guide on pronunciation for these names, because I can't even say those. Yes, we have them. So, And by being armed with the power from the Supreme Majesty, I do strongly command thee, by him who spake, and it was done. So, and unto whom all creatures be obedient. Also I, being made after the image of God, and do with power from God, and create according unto God's will, do exercise thee by that most mighty and powerful name of God. And then you're going to vibrate L, strong and wonderful. O thou spirit, Val. Sounds like Belial. Belial. Belal. Came out really odd. Okay, wow, where'd I go? Okay, and I command thee by all the names of God, vibrate Adonai, El, Elohim, El Ohe, um, Eheye, um, Asher Eheye, Tsa Baot, Elion Yah, Tetragrammatron, uh, Ashadai, Lord God Most High, I do exercise thee, and do powerfully command thee, O thou spirit Baal, that thou dost forwith appear unto me, before the circle in a fair human shape, without any deformity or torrid, whatever, and by this inf ineffable name vibrate Tetragrammatron, Yud He Vav He. Do I command thee, at which, being heard, the elements are overthrown, the air is shaken, the sea runneth back, the fire is quenched, the earth trembleth, and all the hosts of the celestials, terrestrials and infernals, do tremble together, and are troubled and confounded. Okay, so, wherefore come thou, O spirit Baal, forwith and without delay, from any or all parts of the universe, wherever thou mayest be, and make rational answers unto all things that I shall demand of thee. Come thou peacefully, peaceably, visibly, and affably, now and without delay, manifesting that which I shall desire, for thou art conjured by the name, yeah, these are long, the living and true God, um, Helioren, Helioren, Wherefore fulfill thou my commands, and persist thou therein unto the end. And according unto mine interest, visibly and affably, speaking unto me with a voice clear and intelligible, without any ambiguity. Amb ambiguity. Ambiguity. Wow. Alright, so. Alright, he goes on to say that you may repeat this as often as you wish. So the conjuration, I really practiced at first because I butchered it. So nothing's going to happen from that one. Pause after the conjuration to ask the seer if he or she sees anything in the mirror. If after a short pause the seer has no vision, you should repeat the conjuration. So, <laughs> Although you may repeat it as much as you like, I have found that after three or four times my interest wanes. Then you should move on to the next conjuration. If the seer um, interrupts and claims seeing something in the mirror, finish the conjuration before going on to the questioning. So, however, if there is no appearance after the first 
um, conjuration going to the second one as follows. Wow. Alright, I'm gonna attempt to really, really try this one good. So, I do evocate, conjure, and command thee, O thou spirit bell, to appear and to show thyself visibly unto me before the circle in fair and comely shape, without any deformity, by the name and in the name, and you're gonna vibrate Yah and Vav, which Adam heard and spoke, and by the name of God, vibrate Agla, uh, which Lot heard and was saved with his family, and by the name, you're gonna vibrate Ye Oath, with Jacob, who was delivered from the hand of um, Esu, his brother, heard from the angel, wrestling with him, and by the name, vibrate An A Pox, Oh, facts, eh, tone, which Aaron heard and spoke, and was made wise, and by the name of vibrate, za, ba'at, which Moses named, and all the rivers were turned into blood, and by the name vibrate, a, share, eh, he, ye, um, or is tone, which Moses named, and all the rivers brought forth frogs. And they ascended in the houses, destroying all things. And by the name vibrate um, El Yon, which Moses named, and there was a uh, great hail, such as had not been since the beginning of the world. And by the name vibrate Adonai, which Moses named, and there came up locusts, which appeared upon the whole land, and devoured all which the hail had left. And by the name vibrate, Shma a Matia, which Joshua called upon, and then the sun stayed its course. Why is this doing? Hold on, guys. I'm sorry. My computer is telling me that I need to restart it for some odd reason. Why am I not? It's supposed to let me pick time. Hold on. Um, I'm gonna pick a time. I don't know what happened. Hopefully it doesn't restart. Okay. Alright. And by the name Alpha and Omega, which Daniel named and destroyed Bell, and slew the dragon, and in the, of the name of Vibrate, E. Man U. L which the three children, Sadrash, Misash, and Abding, Ab Abednego, sang in the midst of the fire furnace and were delivered, and by the name Vibrate, ha g -os, and by the throne of Vibrate Adonai, and by Vibrate um, Iskiros, Atan Atos, Paraklitos, and by Vibrate O, Dios, Ictros, Athantos, and by the three secret names vibrate, Agla, On, Tetragrammatron, do I adjure and constrain thee, and by these names, and by all the other names of the living and true God, the Lord Almighty, I do exercise and command thee of spirit bowel, even by God who spake the word, and it was done, to whom all creatures are obedient and by the dreadful judgments of God, and by the uncertain sea of glass, which is before the divine majesty, mighty and powerful, by the four beasts before the throne, having eyes before and behind, by the fire around the throne, by the holy angels of heaven, and by the mighty wisdom of God, I do potently exercise thee, that thou appearest here before this circle to fulfill my will in all things which shall seem seem good unto me by the name of vibrate boss da tha bal dak he ah and by this name vibrate prime u matan which moses named and the earth opened and did swallow up korah dathan and abraham abiram 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 it's all right Wherefore thou shalt make faithful answers unto all my demands, O spirit bow, and shalt perform all my desires, so as far as that is 
as in thine office thou art capable thereof. Uh, wherefore come thou, visibly peaceful, peaceable, and affably, now without delay to manifest that which I desire, speaking with a clear and perfect voice, intelligibly, and to mine understanding. Wow. All right. Now, again, um, ask the seer if he or she sees anything in the mirror. So if the answer is yes, proceed to the questionings. So if not, you may repeat the second conjuration or any of those that follow in the grimoire. You may also chant the name of the spirit that you are trying to contact over and over as if it were a mantra. Mantra. So this is especially effective if you have a group of 10 or more people. Wow. That'd be neat. That'd be really neat, having like all the people with candles and chanting and just the atmosphere would just be amazing. So although there are many more conjurations in Goetia, it has been my experience that the first two will more than suffice. If after reciting them three times each with no result, it is fair to conclude that you are not going to have any luck and that the seer is not capable of learning anything at this time. So if the seer informs you that he or she does see something, but it is unclear, everyone should chant the name of the spirit until the seer says the vision is clear. Once it is clear, proceed on to the questionings. All right, so the questionings. Okay, here we go with the questionings. Wow, I feel like uh, interrogation, like in a interrogation room. <laughs> okay, so number one, the first question is to ask. To ask is directed toward the seer. Simply ask, what do you see in the mirror? If the seer says nothing or gives no reply, repeat one of the evoking conjurations. All right, now, if the seer describes a scene, write down what is reported with the paper and writing implement, which was put in the circle for this purpose. If the seer describes an entity, See if it matches the description in the grimoire you are using. In the case of Baal, he normally appears as a cat, toad, man, or all three at once. I don't think I've ever experienced him. So if the entity appears in a shape so unusual or, or weird, as it sometimes will happen, <clears throat> that the seer is frightened or upset, say loudly and in a firm voice, um, I do, I do um, evocate, conjure, and command thee, O thou spirit Baal, to show thyself in a fair and calmly shape, without any deformity or um, tor 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 torturosity, whatever, by the name and powers of vibrate Eheye, Asher, Eheye, and yod -He -Vav -He Elohim. When recited, the figure should change appearance. So if it does not, immediately give the license to depart, which is given later in this lesson. Okay, and thoroughly banish the area, for the wrong entity has appeared as a result of your magic. If the spirit is of a pleasant appearance or takes on such an appearance at your command, move on to two. So, ask the spirit, what is thy name? The seer should respond by saying, I feel his name is blank, or he says his name is blank. Follow followed by the spirit's name. So you will find that the entities we deal with do not lie. However, they do not always give a full answer, or one that is intelligible to you. Very true. As an example of this, they may give another name by which they are known, or may simply refuse to answer. So if this should happen, say, by the power of vibrate and spell out the letters with your lesser vanishing ritual pentagram dagger in the air and visualize the letters in bright blue. Yud he vav he, I command you to tell us your true name without hesitation or equivoc e equivocation. So at this time, you should get the correct reply. Now, if the spirit gives its name as being the one you are seeking to contact, continue to welcome to the welcome below. If not, give the license to depart and thoroughly manage the area. It said this is just for like a group, a very, very big group, <laughs> obviously. All right, this is to welcome unto the spirit. So welcome, O most noble spirit Baal. I say thou art welcome unto me because I have called thee through God, whom hast created heaven and earth, and that all is in them contained. 
and because also thou hast obeyed the will of God, and mine own will by appearing here now. By that same power by which I have called thee forth, I bind thee for a time, and thou remain affably and visibly here before this circle within this triangle, so long as I shall have um, occasion for thy presence. Do not depart without my license until thou hast duly and faithfully performed my will without any falsity. Now, standing behind this ear, point the dagger used in the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram directly at the triangle outside of the circle and say, by the power of God I have called thee, give unto me a true answer. Now, state what it is you desire of the entity that you have summoned. In the case of Baal, you would ask, what are the secrets of invisibility? Very nice. Um, have the seer tell you anything and everything that the spirit says. So, um, point towards, or does, and copy what the seer says on the paper you have brought from the, that purpose. So once this part of the invoc evocation is complete, give out loud the license to depart. So, O thou spirit bow, because thou hast diligently answered unto my demands, and hast uh, been very ready and willing to come to my call, I do here license thee to depart under thy proper place. Go now in peace to thy abodes and habitations, causing neither harm nor danger unto humans or beasts. Depart then, I say, and be thou very ready to come at my call. When duly conjured by the sacred rites of magic, I charge thee to withdraw peaceably and quietly, and may the peace of God be ever continued between thee and me, so mote it be. And then you're going to finish the ritual with the closing of the watchtower. So, all right now. Yeah, um, it is not necessary to have a seer, you can act as the seer yourself. However, it is much easier to have a seer, so that one of you can perform the ritual while the other co concentrates on the magic mirror. Also, you will have probably noticed that I did not tell you that the appropriate incense to use, nor the appropriate time to do this ritual, nor the appropriate color symbolism. Yeah, do your research. So. There is an important reason for this. The purpose of this course is not to make you sort of familiar with magic. It is not to have you read and be somewhat familiar with stacks of books on the subject. It is the purpose of this course to make you a practicing magician. Should you merely be able to follow books, you will never be more than a hack writer. So, um, is to literature. And frankly, a few Hemingways, huh, Lagoons and... Uh, Cervantes are worth a thousand formula novelists. This is not to say that there isn't a place for uh, redundant romance novels or comic book magicians. There is. But it is not what I hope this course will produce. No. You are wherever you are. No. So, yes. The time this ritual is performed is important. The, comfort, the color symbolism is important. The choice of incense is important. But at this time, I leave it to you to figure out. Go back over these lessons, and you should have no problem doing so. So, um, as a hint, compare what the spirit can offer you with the talismanic magic chart. Um, from there, you should be able to get the planet and Sephiroth. The rest should be obvious. Google. Goetia. Um, it's, it's, it's everywhere. So, do your research on Bob. So, alright. I said the rest should be obvious. So, it is not um, a start. Oh, if it is not, start this entire course over. For you have not really understood the information presented here. So, some, some people will have to start over, and that's okay. So, the Glacia has the seals, the names, and the descriptions of 72 different spirits, each having various talents and powers which can be shared with you. Much of the book is oh, it is sad to say, has picked up the junk and, um, excerpt, whatever, of centuries of repression and stupidity. <laughs> Some sections of the Goetia refer to the other books of the Lesser Key of Solomon, of which the Goetia is but one. But one. Unfortunately, there is only one known source for the complete Lesser Key, and it's rather expensive and of poor quality. 
so. However, with the instructions in this course and the commonly available editions of the Goetia, you can and have virtually years of practical work and experimentation. The most com commonly available version is titled, titled The Lesser Key of Solomon, Goetia, the Book of Evil Spirits. They're not evil spirits. So this title, however, is quite misleading, for in this book you are dealing with energies or forces which take on a type of a personality. But they are no more evil forces than electricity. Another force is good or evil. So it's just like a kitchen knife. You can cut your fingers off or you can cut carrots. Even though evil is not a question in this particular instance, karma is. Even something which is superficially which superficially seems to be positive may lead to karmically negative actions. So before acting on um, advice of any goetic, goetic spirit, be sure to do a divination in order to be positive that you will not be performing any magic or action which would unknowingly lead to um, deleterious results. Alright, so since this is not a course in um, Goetian Goetic, Goetic magic, I will not be giving you 72 examples, one for each spirit. Rather, at this time, I, ur I can urge you to obtain a copy of the book and simply follow the pattern given in the ritual above. Replace the name Baal with the name of the spirit from the Goetia you wish to evoke. Use the appropriate seal as given in that text and you, until you obtain a copy of the book or if you merely wish to try out some Goetic magic, see if it appeals to you. In the following pages are a few simple samples of Goetic spirits, their seals, descriptions, and purposes. Hmm. Alright, so we'll go over these three spirits right now. And we have Amon, which I love. So above is the seal for Amon, or Amon. And yes, you should color them in in their appropriate colors, and they do have appropriate colors, and they have different ranks. So, um, alright, Amon is uh, in great power, and is also said to be very stern. He looks like a wolf, with a tail of a serpent and breath of fire, um, at the command of the magician. Amon will change to look like a man with a raven's head. Sometimes there are dog's, dog's teeth, like the fangs, the canines. So, in the head of his raven. Ooh, Am Amon will give you information on all things past and things yet to be. So, having a neutral nature, uh, he can help reconcile differences between friends. So, however, he can also cause feuds. Needless to say, care must be taken in asking for what you desire of Amon. Yes. Now we have the spirit viewer. I, and I love this one. It's a centaur. So here is Bure. Right there. Alright, okay. And then Bure should only be evoked during the astrological sign of Sagittarius. So, and appears as the Sagittarian centaur. He teaches science and philosophy including such things as mathematics, ethics, logic, and physics. Who does that sound like? Thoth. A little bit. His specialty is teaching the secrets of uh, the secret magical and medicinal powers of herbs and plants. He has also healing powers, especially over psychological pain. Alright, now. Now, below is the seal of the spirit, Bodhis. At first, he will appear as an ugly viper but on the command of the magician, changes into the shape of a man's, of a man with great teeth, fangs again, two horns, and carrying a sword of um, exquisite sharpness and brightness. When evoked, he can offer things similar to Amon. Note to the similarity with the change of appearance and the fangs. Bodhis is said to tell things from the past and those yet to come. He can also reconcile disagreements between friends and foes. So. Here is Votus, his sigil. So you guys can screenshot that, or you guys can actually get the get the books, or if you have the books already, I'm sure a lot of you already have these, a lot of these. All right, so 
Alright, so um, as a historical document, the Goetia is fascinating. Um, several spirits are nothing more than deities of earlier cultures. So, thus the spirit Astaroth is nothing more than a form of the goddess Athroth, Astaroth, um, also known as Astarte and Isis, revealing a Judeo-Christian pattern of paternal bias. So the spirit Astaroth becomes a male. This certainly helps to validate the sociological theory that the gods and the goddesses of any culture become the demons of the following culture. I should leave off with that, but I'm not going to. And within the church's influence, even goddesses become male demons. Alright, so, I recently saw a program on television wherein the studio was uh, decorated to appear as a cave. The speaker was putting forth some his bizarre hysteria about how a fantasy role-playing game result was resulting in demon possession. Ooh, I wonder if it was Dungeons and Dragons. I remember when that whole thing went crazy. Um, where to go? People leaving Christianity. Oh, it had people leaving Christianity? Whatever, so what? Since this program was on a religious network, so, uh, the purpose of this program had, uh, to only to appeal uh, to the paranoia of those who already believed in one form of Christianity. So, however, another Christian writer, theologian, and radio personality says that Christians cannot become demon-possessed, but they always do. They're the ones that always are. Coincidence? No. Therefore, this TV program presented a philosophy not even in accord with other Christian ap apologists. So, of course, one good way to keep large numbers of people under your control is to keep instilling fear into them. So, this seems to be a major function of the Christian, quote, quote, Christian, broadcasting. In any event, I disagree totally with the TV program's content as being nothing more than irrationalist, fear-inducing, and paranoid, paranoid superstition. They're most, most Christians are more supersti superstitious, than pagans. So, to be fair, much of occultism is also hidden in the stupidity of paranoia and superstition. Yes. The recent book I read um, and on occult topics used the National Enquirer. That's where I actually saw about John Travolta trying to raise his son from the dead. Um, and a Hare Krishna magazine as sources for information. And even if the author did not understand that the National Enquirer <laughs> is not necessarily considered an example of journalistic excellence. <laughs> he should have checked for other sources, too. Um, he also should have realized that the Hare Krishna magazine present things in order to make their organization look good. Truth and reality notwithstanding. So I repeat here, don't take my word or anybody else's word for anything in occultism. There is no room for authority within occultism. So, alright. Alright, so check it out and research, research it for yourself. Uh, Dion, Dion Fortune said, there is no room for authority in occultism in reference to occult studies. This was sick. This was put, oh, this was put forth in a bumper sticker which simply read, question authority. Hmm. Alright, so we will go on with more. I'm actually going to highlight this real quick. Because I'm very interested in... Ooh, yeah, broke that. Very interesting. So, alright, so we went over a little bit of the Goetia, which is, I mean, very interesting stuff. A lot of people are going to tell you that you can't do it. You have to have, be initiated. You have to be in a certain whatever. No, you don't. So, remember, there is no room for occult authority in occultism. All right, so we went over. This is still lesson nine. And where did we start? We started with part four, right? No, part three and four. So we will continue tomorrow. 
that, that's pretty interesting information. I really like the Goetia. So, and I just think it's really cool to see how um, the past, you know, um, gods and goddesses and spirits have become modern day demons and devils and all that good stuff. So, whatever. All right, guys. Well, I hope you guys have a great weekend and everybody, yeah, stay safe. Um, be careful. And yeah, I love you all. And all my love, all the way from Venus, all the way back down. There we go. That's a better heart. Alright, guys. I love you all. And thank you guys for watching. And I will see you all tomorrow. So.